I'm going to talk about probably one of the best zombie survival games out there, Project Zomboid. If you play survival crafting games of any kind, then you've probably heard of Project Zomboid. And if somehow you haven't, Project Zomboid is a game where they took The Sims and added a bunch of zombies to it. That's probably not the best description, but it's the best I can come up with at the moment. And what makes Project Zomboid so special is probably one of the most in-depth and quote-unquote realistic zombie games out there. Don't let the isometric view and the simple textures fill you. This game is something else. So now you're probably wondering, what is the main goal of Project Zomboid? Well, like other survival games, your goal is to survive as long as you can. And like other survival games, you gather resources making sure you have enough food and water make your own base. So what makes this game so special? Well, because you're not special. Now, I know I've hurt some people's feelings with that, but let me explain. In Project Zomboid, you're not the super soldier or special survivor. You're just someone trying to get by. And the game makes this very clear within the first few seconds of loading into the game by stating, this is how you died. The game makes it very clear from the beginning that you will not survive this. If the zombies don't get you, winter will get you. If winter doesn't get you, the lack of resources will. There is a finite amount of resources in this game and eventually you will run out. And I think this is why I enjoy Project Zomboid so much. Unlike other survival games like 7 Days to Die, there's a real challenge here. Now we're 2 minutes into the video and I've barely scratched the surface of this game. So let's dig in. But just before I do, a quick warning, there is a lot to this game and I would not be able to cover it in a single video. However, I will try to keep this as simple and straightforward as I can. When going into Project Zomboid, you have four main scenarios to choose from. We have Apocalypse, Survivor, Builder, and Custom Sandbox. We'll get into that one later. Just a heads up, the main differences between Apocalypse and Survivor is that Survivor has weaker zombies, making a lot more combat focused playstyle. And Builder's pretty self-explanatory. After you choose your mode, you choose where to spawn. From here you have four places to choose from, you have Maldra, Riverside, Rosewood and West Point. I should have probably mentioned this but the game is based in Kentucky in the United States. After you choose your spawn, you get into the character customization, and this is where things can get a little bit convoluted. From here you get to build your character from what they used to do before the apocalypse. I will list off all the occupations now. You have fire officer, police officer, park ranger, construction worker, security guard, carpenter, burglar, chef, repairman, farmer, fisherman, doctor, veteran, nurse, lumberjack, fitness instructor, burger flipper, electrician, engineer, metalworking and finally mechanic. You can also pick unemployed if you want. After you choose your occupation you can start choosing your traits. And just a heads up, if you're wanting to pick one of these occupations, you're going to need to pick some of these. And no, I am not listing off every trait. And after that, you start creating your own character. I don't need to say much about this. You, you, make, your, you, you make your own character. Now it's time to survive. Now expect to die a lot, especially if this is your first time playing the game. Most players loot the first home they're in, just so they can gather basic resources like food, water and maybe a weapon. Personally, I enjoy hopping my neighbor's fence and showing him what I think for not subscribing to my channel. Are you subscribed to the channel? Obviously, I won't be going into too much debt on how to play the game. This isn't a tutorial, more of a review of the game itself. However, if you want a video that goes over basic survival tips and maybe help you survive a little bit longer in Project Zomboid, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to do one. Now, this should go without saying, but your main threat in this game will be the zombies. Now, there's only one other game that I know of when you get bit, it's actually 
dangerous. <laughs> and that game being called State of Decay 2. But at least in that game, you were able to cure your infection. In Project Zomboid, once you're bit, that's it. You're a ticking time bomb. Congrats, you're now part of the Legion of the Undead. Rarely I get to see zombie games where zombies are a real threat. In Project Zomboids, you have to take time and consider if dealing with a group of zombies is really worth it. But sometimes the game will give you no choice and you will have to fight tooth and nail to survive. Dealing with a horde of zombies is probably one of the most difficult situations you can be in. You can blast through all your ammo without making a dent into the horde. And if you're like this poor chap, you can get yourself trapped in a building. My advice when dealing with a horde is try to get as much space as you can. Because if you don't, you could end up like this guy. It's an unfortunate end, however, I think that's how most players prefer to die anyway. Now, if you got into the point where you feel like you've done all you could in a game and you don't know what else to do, well, here's where the custom sandbox comes in. In custom sandbox, you can change absolutely everything from how much loot there is to what time of day it is. And you can change how strong or how weak the zombies are, how good the hearing is or how good their sight is. And if for some reason, if you thought dealing with thousands of zombies wasn't hard enough, you can make them sprint. <laughs> Being able to use the custom sandbox in the game, making your ideal zombie apocalypse is brilliant. And if you thought the game couldn't get any better, there's also Steam Workshop that has thousands of mods that changes the game completely. With mods with cars and weapons and maps. Some mods are so good that I cannot play the game without them now. I am of course talking about Brita's weapon and armor pack. These two mods add so many different types of clothing and weapons. I personally think they are a must have when playing the game. There's so much I haven't mentioned, like I have not mentioned anything about skills or like how the world changes as time goes on. And the crazy amount of time you have to put in to level up your skills. Or how insanely frustrating it can be when you lose your character after two months of playing. And like an absolute masochist, I keep coming back. But anyway, if I did talk about these things, this video will be super long and I don't want that. Honestly, I recommend anyone who's interested in survival games to give this game a shot. Did I mention it also has multiplayer? And unlike 7 Days to Die multiplayer, it actually runs smoothly. Anyway, I'm going to end the video off here. This video was kind of different from what I normally make. I normally make VR related content. And this is one of the first videos that I've made that's not VR related. I'm almost certain there's more I can improve on and more I can do. However, I wanted to start it small before I did anything crazy. If you liked the video, leave a like and perhaps a comment. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. And if by chance, for some reason, you want to see more Project Zomboid content, let me know. I'll be more than happy to make it. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you all next time.